Hey guys, it's been a long time since I posted something, so I figured I'd go ahead and fire something out to you. You know, at the meeting uh, yesterday, we were talking about uh, hitting your bottom. It was out of like the 24-hour day or daily reflections book, one of those. And uh, one thing that just hit me was uh, the term the bottom. You know, it says in the 12 and 12 that, uh, you know, they initially were seeking out uh, the really low down bottom of the barrel drunks, right? Bottom of the barrel. And, uh, you know, and helping them out. But as time has gone by, you know, a lot of people haven't hit what we would consider to be that terrible of a bottom, right? Uh, but I guess it's more personal to everybody, you know, what they feel their bottom is. And now there's a page in the big book with no number on it. Don't look for it. It's not there. It's page 279. And, uh, I swear Phyllis shoved this page in my book. It was never there until uh, uh, she had me read it. And, uh, you know, so I thank her for doing that. And the first half of it describes on uh, this page that uh, how these 17 stories are about, you know, young people, people who haven't really gone that far down. Uh, they described it as uh, a little more than a sometimes uncontrollable nuisance. Uh, I don't recall ever being at that point. And, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, and, and I can understand how they were like, man, I don't, I don't want to go down that road. You know, sometimes it's because, you know, like a relative saw it or, um, you know, uh, some of them actually have a little bit of snap to them. Uh, but by and large, you know, it's, uh, we drink until we quit drinking. And, uh, but what gets me is the second half of that. They realized that repeated lack of drinking control, when they really wanted control, was the fatal symptom that spelled problem drinking. This, plus mounting emotional disturbances, convinced them that compulsive alcoholism already had them, and that complete ruin would be only a question of time. Seeing this danger, they came to AA. They realized, to, uh, in the end, alcoholism could be as mortal as cancer. Certainly no sane man would wait for a malignant growth to become fatal before seeking help. Therefore, these 17 AAs and hundreds and thousands like them have been saved years of infinite suffering. They sum it up something like this. We didn't wait to hit bottom because, thank God, we could see the bottom. Actually, the bottom came and hit us. That sold us on Alcoholics Anonymous. And, uh, you know, I got to thinking about it during this meeting is that, you know, when looking at the bottom, right, trying to figure out where our personal bottom is, because some people say, well, man, that's pretty bad. We just share war stories and drunk logs and whatnot to find out whose, you know, life was the bigger shit show. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter because they didn't experience anything but their own experience. And for them, it was enough. And, uh, you know, but what gets me is that when it says they stopped in time, really, the, uh, you know, it, it, when I think about it, when it says they stop in time, it's like, I'm not dead yet. You know, because really, that's the, the ultimate bottom, isn't it? You know, down at the bottom of a hole. And, uh, you know, so I still have opportunities for God to use me however he wants to use me. It says on page 67, it talks about how the fear is a corroding thread that shot through our entire existence. It describes how, uh, you know, it set forward a train of events which, uh, you know, brought us such terribleness uh, and suffering that uh, we didn't feel we deserved. Well, what if... It wasn't suffering at all. What if that was to help me realize that maybe I could be helpful to somebody? I had to go through some stuff first. Um, growing up, I was on the 30-year plan. I didn't want to live past 30. Uh, in a few days, I turned 50. Not expected. And, uh, you know, the past eight years of my life have been drastically different different than anything I could expect. I've done more stuff in this time, which has been helpful to others, than uh, I ever have in my life. It's uh, It's been an interesting path. 
the uh, I got time, which is something I, I didn't want for the longest time. You know, I didn't want to be around because I felt that everything was all pain and suffering and misery. Uh, everything was, was horrible. And uh, I just wanted off. And uh, I was fortunate that God saw fit to, to, to use me uh, to try to be helpful to others. Have I been helpful to everybody? No, but I wanted to. You know, and I guess that's all that matters. He, he, he let me help where I could be helpful. I have time and you know it's not a program of time time is what I received from working the program working the steps working with others you know I appreciate the time that I have now I value the time that I have now you know this is a, a wonderful time for me to experience new stuff and I've got new stuff coming do I have fears? Of course I do. You know, my my fabric of my existence is shot through with it. You know, it's a corrosive thread. Well, imagine trying to pull one little thread out of a piece of fabric. What's going to happen? It's going to get all wadded up and everything. You're going to have that blank spot. You know, well, what if it breaks? And then you got a freight end and all this other stuff. Well, what if that's not the purpose of everything is to rip that thread out? What if it's to tie a new thread on? And continue uh, looming. And, you know, this is what I look forward to. Uh, you know, God, once I've cleared away a bunch of the shit that was separating me from God. And, you know, started building a conduit. You know, I'm starting to see things in hindsight now that, at the time, I, I, I didn't understand. Right? And I had doubts and fears and questions and whatnot. A uh, great example is, you know, last year uh, in July, my mom died right at the uh, on the 29th. And, you know, I described every, to everybody that I felt lost. I wasn't afraid. I felt lost. And uh, it says in the big book, it says a couple times, if you seek, you will find. Uh, part C, God could and would if you were sought. Well, I was looking and didn't know where to look. And, uh, you know, one of the things that... Uh, that God did for me that I didn't see at the time was at the meeting house, they dropped off three little puppies. And I was like, you know what? My mom, she just went to the hospital. She's going to be in there a couple days. Well, when she gets out, there'll be an itty bitty little puppy and, you know, it'll boost morale. It'll help her, you know, give her something to do when I'm at work. And, you know, and, you know, my mom never came home from the hospital. And so she never got to see the dog. And uh, looking back, I don't think the dog was for her. My intentions were for her to have the dog and to be beneficial to her. But what I come to understand now is that the dog was for me. You know, that God knew that I was going to be going through some painful times. God knew that I was going to be hurting and having doubts and fears. So he put a little life in my life you know, that I'm accountable to. I make sure the dog is happy, is fed. You know, if I go out on some crazy ass bender, then, uh, you know, that means I got to leave the dog locked up in the cage for an indefinite amount of time, which is not right. And, uh, you know, so I made sure I'd come straight home. Literally that dog kept me sober just because I couldn't, I couldn't hurt the dog. And, uh, you know, by hurting myself, I couldn't have seen that before. You know, some would say that, you know, a parent dying is, uh, you know, is a bottom. It is, you know, but uh, God wasn't going to let me sit there. God wasn't going to let me stew there. He put something in my life which would inspire me and keep me going. I'm grateful to that dog. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that this train of misfortune that they talk about on page 67, you know, where we put ourselves in the position to be hurt, where, uh, 
you know, everything is just doom and gloom and negative and everything. Maybe that's just the way I see it sometimes. Because it would stand to reason that if God put me in the position to be hurt, he would also put me in the position to be helped, if I can see it that way. And even more so, he put me in the position to be helpful. You know, and my attitude not look on life changed. You know, the, that's what it says in, in 9, uh, the ninth step promises. And when it talks about a doctor's opinion, a psychic change. Well, it says later on in the book under spiritual experience, it says, It is true that our first printing gave many readers the impression that these personality changes or religious experiences must have been in the nature of sudden and spectacular upheavals. And uh, so it describes the uh, psychic change as personality changes or religious experiences. I think if I look at something, I can look choose to look at it negative or positive. And if I look at it positive, then I get to stay in a solution. If I look in the negative, then I get to stay in the problem. And sometimes uh, it takes me a while to get through it. But uh, once I see it that way, that it is something positive, then that usually comes to me, the sudden and spectacular upheaval. But until I see it that way, it's just, I'm there. That's it. And, uh, you know, so I guess that's it. I don't really know what else to say. And uh, I miss talking to you guys. Have a great one.